Hi everyone, welcome back to Lair Academy. It's Mickey once again, and in this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at Laravel Socialite. Laravel Socialite is a package that easily lets us hook up into other OAuth services such as Facebook, Twitter, and GitHub to name a few. One typical application would be letting our users sign up or register using a GitHub account on our application. And let's actually take a look at how we could do this using Laravel Socialite. We have a default version of Laravel 5.3 installed, and the only thing that I've done is I've made the authentication, and I've added this login with GitHub button, which actually doesn't do anything yet. So the very first thing that we're going to have to do is install Socialite. We can do this using our terminal and running the command composer require Laravel slash Socialite, just let composer run. Once Composer has installed Laravel Socialite and its dependencies, we're going to have to load up our project and install the provider and the alias. So to do this, we'll use Sublime Text. We'll want to load up config slash app.php and scroll down until we find the providers. Once we find the provider array, let's go to the bottom and add the Socialite service provider. We'll also want to use the facade, so we'll scroll down to the aliases and paste our facade in here. Now if you're unfamiliar where we're getting these paths, you can find them in the installation doc in Laravel Socialite. They're just underneath the configuration here. The next thing that we're going to do is switch over to GitHub and log in and set up the application. So I'll just sign in with my account here, and I'll click on my avatar and click settings, and over on the left hand side we can see OAuth applications. Let's register a new application. Make sure for the application name that it's going to be something that your users are going to recognize. For this demo, we'll just use Socialite Demo. For the home page itself, I'm just going to add my testing server in here. So I'll just copy the URL and paste it in. We'll give it an application description. And this can really be anything you want to display to your users. And finally, the callback URL. The callback URL is going to be used if we don't pass one through our code. So think of this as a failsafe. We haven't made this route yet, but I'm going to use my testing server. And on the end, I'm going to use slash auth slash GitHub slash callback. And this is something we're going to create in just a second. Let's register this application now. With our application created successfully, you can see here at the top, we have a client ID and a client secret. This information we're going to have to store in our Laravel application. So let's load up services.php and scroll down to the bottom. We'll create a new key for the service for GitHub, and it will also be an array, and it will contain a client ID, a client secret, and finally a redirect. Now we can hard code values such as this, and that is perfectly fine. Let's just tack on auth github slash callback. However, the proper way we'll want to do it is we'll do it with this secret here, is instead of hard coding this value, let's actually call the env. You can see here in Stripe and Spark Post and everything like that, it's using the environment variable. So let's make sure we do this right. So we'll just copy and paste this in. And let's change Stripe secret here to github underscore client ID. We'll take a copy of this and put it in here for our secret. To get this information working, let's load up our env file, and we'll scroll down all the way to the bottom, and we'll paste these two variables in here, client ID, as well as the secret. We'll switch over to our GitHub page and grab those variables, and make sure we paste them into the env. We'll also grab the secret here, and paste it in and save. Now our services is ready to go. The next step, Let's load up our routes and look at our web.php. Underneath the auth routes, I'm going to add the two routes that we need to get Socialite working. So you can see that our two routes, we have an auth slash GitHub, which is using a social auth controller with a method of redirect to GitHub. And underneath we have a callback using the same controller, which is a different method. Let's create this controller now. Using the terminal, we'll do php artisan make controller and just paste the controller name, social auth controller. Let's go ahead and hit enter. 
and let's load this controller up in Sublime Text. We'll bring back our sidebar, and we can find the controller underneath App, HTTP, Controllers, and then Social Auth Controller. The methods that we're using are fairly simple. Let's create the first method, which is redirect to GitHub, and we're going to be using the social light facade. We'll return social light, and the function that we want to call is driver, and we want to pass our GitHub variable, and then easily just say redirect. So social light is going to handle the redirect for us. Now, because we're using social light, let's make sure that we import this at the top. And that's actually all we need to get the redirect working. Just remember that the driver that we're using, GitHub in this case, actually refers to the config services.php and then the GitHub key found within our array. Next, let's make the function to handle the information that gets returned from GitHub. So we'll make a new public function called handle GitHub callback. And this is pretty straightforward. Let's assign a user variable and we'll use the social life facade, make sure we call the GitHub driver, and then we're just going to return the user information. And we'll end it by dying and dumping the user information onto the screen. Now that's pretty much everything we need to get going. The last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to edit my login.blade.php to include this new route here. So we'll just copy the name, and I'll load up our login script, and I will find my GitHub button here, and just paste this in. Now let's go back to our application and let's reload this login page and we can click the login with GitHub. Now I'm already logged in here and I could authorize this application, but one thing that you should probably do to get everything working is just go back, copy the URL and load up an incognito window. This is just easier if you run into problems to close the window instead of clearing all your sessions. Now if we click the login button, we'll have to log into GitHub. So let's do this now. Now, once I'm signed in, you can see we have the same screen as before, and let's actually authorize this application to see what we get returned from our personal data. You can see here on the screen, we have a couple of pieces of information, such as the name, the email, even an avatar. However, we want to pay close attention to this token and the ID that we get back from GitHub. As this information, we're going to use to store the user. Because right now in our controller, we're really just dying and dumping the user to the screen. Let's work a way on how we can either load a user up or store them when needed. Let's actually go and let's edit our database migration to create the user because we're going to have to store this information first. So we're going to create two fields here. We're going to add a string for the social ID and finally another string for the social token and we will be using the social ID to hook up into the ID that GitHub returns and the social token for the token itself. So far, everything's pretty straightforward. The next thing, I need to edit my ENV just to put in my database name here. Now, I've already created the database ahead of time. The only thing I need to do is migrate my tables. So I'll run PHP artisan migrate to get the user table and password reset table created. The next step will be to take our two fields that we have here, the social ID and social token, and add them to our model. Let's load up our app slash user.php and add them into the fillable fields. The final modification we're going to be making to the user class is the method here, which will create or find the social login. So we'll call it create or find social login and the parameter that we're going to be passing in is going to be the social user. So the social user is actually going to be the user from GitHub or Facebook or whatever OAuth authentication you're using. We want to make sure that this function is static as we don't need a record to actually call it. The very first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to try and grab a user from the database where the social ID is equal to the social user ID that gets passed through. We want to make sure that we grab the first record and do a quick check to see if we have this user. And if we have a user, then let's just return the user. So we want to make sure that the user is not empty and then we'll just return it. And just remember, we're keeping this pretty basic where we're just having a single check. You might want to add something extra here 
such as the email or the name, just something that gives it a little bit more. However, just remember that not all service providers will give you this information, so you'll have to play around with it. Now, if we don't have a user, let's create a user in our database. And actually, let's just return this user that we're going to create. So we'll say return user create and pass in an array. And inside the array, we're going to have the name of the user. And this will come from our social user. And the social user is going to have a name property. The next thing, we'll have an email, again, from the social user and a email property. And because of our database, we want to make sure we pass in a password. However, let's just use a random string, and we'll be calling bcrypt here. Let's use strrandom and 16. Now, we could use the hash method instead of bcrypt. However, the hash method is basically just wrapping bcrypt around everything. So let's just use bcrypt and keep it random. The next thing we're going to pass in is the social ID, which again is from the social user. And finally, the social token. And finally, that is also from the social user. Now, just a quick pause here. The real reason why we're storing a random password here is because our users don't need a password for our system. They just need their password for GitHub, and we don't need to know that. So let's save this method. Let's switch back over to our social auth controller, and we can kind of replace what we have here by just actually finding a user. So let's change this to be a little bit more readable. So first we'll grab the GitHub user, and next we'll create a variable for the database user. We'll call our new function here, create or find social login, and we'll pass in our GitHub user. And because we're using the user class here, let's make sure we import it. So we'll say use app slash user. And next, we're going to take our database user here and log them in. So to do this, all we have to say is auth login and pass in our database user. And let's actually just return a redirect and let's redirect them to slash home. And remember, since we're using auth here, let's also import this. So if we break this down, we're grabbing the GitHub user from Socialite. We're trying to find or create the user within our database using our method here. Within this method, we check to see if they already exist and we return them. Otherwise, we create a new record and return that user. Finally, taking the database user, we log them into our system and we just redirect them back to the home. Now, if we switch back to Chrome and we try and refresh this request, you'll probably get an error such as something like this. And there's two ways to fix this. One would be just to close our browser and try again, or we can go back a few different pages, refresh the request. If we log in with GitHub this time, you can see that we are currently logged in and we can verify that the information was put into our database by running PHP Artisan Tinker. In Tinker, let's run app slash user all to see all the users within our database. You can see that we've grabbed the name, the email, the social ID, and the token and stored it into our database appropriately. What we can do with this token, let's actually grab the first user as we only have one in our database and we can actually use this token to go to the social driver and grab the information at any time we need. So what I mean by this is say the user updates their information on GitHub, we could pull this down into our system as needed. All we would need to do is use the social light, a facade, and call the appropriate driver. In our case, the driver is going to be GitHub. And we're going to call a method instead of user. It's going to be user from token. And let's pass the token that we have stored already in our user variable. If we pull this down and we scroll up a little bit, you can see we have the token, the email, the name, avatar, and everything there. So this gives us access to update our database from GitHub itself. We can also test the logout feature, log back in, make sure we log in with GitHub, and you can see that we've logged back into the system. If we switch over to GitHub and log out of our account, and then go back to our application and log out, 
When we try to log in, because we've logged out of GitHub, it's going to want us to enter our username and password for authenticating there as well. So with that, it wraps up this lesson, and hopefully you can see how easy Socialite is to integrate into your application, and you can get started using it. Thanks for watching.